The Florida man has long been the focus of many crime and justice stories. Stories that are many times difficult to believe are actually true. And we cover many of these stories here on Closing Arguments. But tonight, we turn our focus on the Florida woman as we put the spotlight on three of the highest profile cases we are following involving women in Florida accused of murder. Courtney Clenny was living a lavish lifestyle in South Florida with her boyfriend, Christian Obamselli. She made millions as an OnlyFans model, selling monthly subscriptions for her very sexually explicit videos, some with her boyfriend. Now, she's accused of murdering him, and her lawyer joins us live tonight. Ashley Benefield was a swimsuit model and former ballerina when she met Doug Benefield and married him within days. But when she got pregnant with their child, she moved to Florida to live with her mother. Doug followed her there. They fought in court over the custody of their new child, and just before a court appearance, she shot and killed Doug. She's charged with murder but claims self-defense. Tonight, Doug's family law attorney joins us live. But first, Shanna Gardner was in a custody battle with her ex-husband for seven years. Both she and her ex, loving father of three, Jared Bridegan, were remarried. But when Jared was murdered execution style, investigators suspected Shanna was involved. And now she's been arrested and we have the dramatic body cam video of the moment she finds out she's getting cuffed. This hour on Closing Arguments, Florida women accused of murder. I'm Benny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And off the top, let me just say, I love Florida. Okay, I love Florida. I, and when I'm done here at Court TV, that's where I'm going. That's where you can find me, down in Florida. So don't, I don't want you to perceive anything tonight as being, oh, Vinny hates Florida, Vinny's making fun of, no, no. I love Florida. And through the years, we've covered a lot of Florida cases here on Court TV. More than any other state. Just a lot of Florida cases. A ton of them here on Court TV. So... Uh, very familiar with all the different parts of Florida and the stories. And in, in, in a lot of these trials, we've covered men in Florida. And you know the old saying, we're talking about the, the Florida man. And we've covered that trial many, many, many times. But tonight on this show, we're going to focus on um, the Florida woman. Because there's three really big cases uh, that we've been covering here on Closing Arguments that we're tracking that are getting closer and closer to their trial dates. And tonight we're going to take a close look at them. The first one is going to be uh, a Shanna Gardner. This is a woman who was in the middle of a um, custody battle, and there's a hit put out on her husband. Two people are arrested, her new husband and the hitman who was admitted doing all of this. And now finally she's been arrested, and we have that body cam. And you are going to see it tonight on this program. But first, Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson has the backstory for us. Jared Brightigan appeared to have it all. A new job as a Microsoft executive, living in sunny Florida with his wife Kirsten and four children. We had just had London. She was six months old. So things were good. Kirsten had two children with Jared, London and Bexley. They also shared custody of his nine-year-old twins from a previous marriage. On the week that we did not have the oldest two kids at our home, Jared would take them out to dinner. It was referred to as date night in this agreement. The agreement kept Jared and Kirsten in Florida. Bride again and his ex-wife, Shanna Gardner Fernandez, were in a bitter custody battle. What was that relationship like, he and his ex-wife? The relationship between us and his ex-wife um, was not cordial. Our communications were always in writing because there was not mutual trust between the two households. On February 16th, 2022, Jared had one of his scheduled daddy date nights. After dinner, he dropped off his twin daughter and son at his ex-wife's home in Jacksonville Beach, Florida, and headed home to St. Augustine. On the way, he stopped to get his two and a half year old daughter, Bexley, ice cream. She was in the back seat of his SUV. He then called Kirsten, telling her he loved her and would be home soon. How did you learn something was wrong? As time started ticking by and the time that they're usually home passed, 
I can't even describe it, but like, I just knew something's not right. Her fears became reality after an officer answered Jared's cell phone, telling her Bexley was unharmed. But they needed her to come by the police station to hear about her husband. They later on that night told me that he had been shot. Where did this happen? Because he usually gets in the car and just drives home. I had talked to him. Jared was not a victim of any robbery gone wrong or carjacking. Police say he was the victim of a targeted attack on a one-way road he traveled often. Jared came across a tire police say was intentionally placed right here in the middle of the road in the sanctuary neighborhood of Jacksonville Beach, Florida. That's when someone came out of these woods and ambushed the father of four, killing him on the spot. For almost a year, no answers. Then in January 2023, a break in the case. Henry Tenen was arrested for the following crimes. Conspiracy to commit murder, second degree murder with a weapon, accessory after the fact to a capital felony and child abuse. Now investigators say that Tenen has pleaded guilty in the case and admitted to shooting Brightigan. Henry Tenen pled guilty to murdering Jared Brightigan. Henry Tenen has admitted that he in fact was the shooter. According to court records, Tenen once lived in this house that was once owned by Brightigan's ex-wife's current husband. And now investigators have charged both the ex-wife, Shanna Gardner, and her husband, Mario Fernandez Saldana, with first-degree murder. We will be filing a notice of our intent to seek the death penalty. Prosecutors call Gardner the mastermind behind the murder. Both Shanna and Mario have denied any involvement. Meanwhile, Jared's widow says that she suspected them from the beginning. Had you suspected that Mario was also involved in all of this? From very, very early on, um, I felt, like obviously I didn't have any evidence, but I felt that Mario Fernandez and Shannon Gardner would be involved as, somehow. So here's the backstory with all this, is that first the hitman is arrested and admits what he did, right? Then you've got Shanna's new husband arrested, but she's not arrested in, in all of this. And then finally she is, the last one. So here's the moment that she finds out she's under arrest. We've got the body cam video. Let's take a look.
Yeah. We're gonna do, we're gonna bring you inside real quick. Get you out of the long car, right? Thank you. Can you step out for me. Yeah. We're gonna go through these doors over here. And then there's gonna be a hallway to your left there. Have you take a left there for me? Then we'll go down to this last door here on the left. Have you stand there for me? Not sound. It's... And I'll have you take a seat over here. And what I'll do, actually, if you want to face the wall for me. If you want to take the hand, place the top of your head for me. Uh, if you want to step to your left or turn the other way, I'll have you take a seat. Turn the other way for me. Right. And then if you want to take a seat for me. No, you're okay. I'm just going to scoot you a little bit. more tight. I'll loosen it a little bit. Are those cuffs putting any strain on your shoulders or anything? Well, I'll get you down to jail um, as soon as possible, and then we'll get you out of these cuffs. How far away is the jail? Um, probably about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes with yeah. bus construction, so. I feel bad. Do you want me to grab this and put it in the trash? No, no, we'll get it for you. That's all right. Do I need to get my water? Um, do you want any more water before we go? Um, sure. You want a little bit last? Good. And then we'll just go back out to the same car we came in. It's just one on here on the left. And what I'll have you do is I'll just have you face the numbers right here. Um, just because you were in that room, I am just going to pat you down. Um, just to make sure nothing else ended up in your pockets. I still do have your medications with me. Okay. Um, so those will be checked into the jail. Okay. Um, just want to have a seat for me. Um, I do have a question for you. It's not um, regards to the charges at all. Those, uh, the medication that's in that little work divider. Yeah. What's in those? I can tell you. Just the reason I asked is because the jail might not take that divider. Not, that's fine. Um, um, I, I don't have know. enough in the bottles. Okay. I if, think there was only a day left is what my mom said. Okay. And if you have them in the bottles, then that, that, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, I just saw that in there, and, and the jail is pretty picky on prescriptions. Yeah. So we'll take. No, I figured the divider my mom can come and get. Um, the, the, yeah. Okay. Um, and I am just going to read you just since I have you, I have you in my custody. Um, I don't know what the detectives asked you. I'm just going to read you something. Um, um, so you have the right to counsel at this time. If you're unable to pay for counsel, well, you'll be entitled to have one provided without charge. Do you understand that? Okay. Um, and that's it. So I'll, uh, I'm going to put your seatbelt on. I'll get you down there. It's hot. <laughs> so uh, my vehicle can't keep up. Okay. How do you guys wear all the stuff you guys have to do? 
Um, and I'll get you down there so you're out of cuffs. I know those are uncomfortable. So just a tie for me, all right? Yeah, she can afford an attorney. Trust me, your family has tons and tons of money. She's arrested in Washington State, originally from Utah, but was living in Florida and will now be tried in Florida for murder. But how about her demeanor? Wow. I mean, very matter of fact, I guess she was expecting it and was prepared for this. Let's talk about it. Joining me now in Orlando, Florida, talk about high-powered criminal defense attorneys. Here he is. He famously represented George Zimmerman successfully. Mark O'Mara is with us. Mark, great to see you. Benny, great to see you again. It's been way too long. Yeah. So let's let's talk about. I mean, this is someone who grew up with with lots of money, wealth, you know, everything that she ever needed, is now facing life in prison and is arrested. Are you shocked by her demeanor in this arrest? So you, you never know across the spectrum what's going to happen, right? Some people just go crazy, cry, scream, and all that. Certainly her demeanor is not going to play very well with those who are looking at her like a prosecutor and maybe even a jury someday This it, because it looks cold, right? It looks calculated. Those words that we know we're going to hear from the prosecutors when they try and convict her of in effect, this type of a murder, right? This type of a hit murder. So no, you would imagine some more emotions, even being away from the children, being away from the family. Finally, the day has come of her maybe beginning of her reckoning. It was very, it was telling to me that she was completely flat affect. So one of her co-defendants is her new husband, right? So yes. It seems that they have, dis before the arrest, they were distancing themselves. Do you see this as a case where she is going to turn on him because he's the one that is more closely connected to the man admitting to the actual killing? Uh, we're going to see a lot of that back and forth, right? And I think the reason why they did it the way they did it was to bring in the hitman first I'm not still sure why they only charged him with second, but we'll get into that maybe. Then bring in the husband. I think they waited, maybe got some information from the husband, maybe gave him an opportunity because if you think about it in this little triad of potential murderers, not convicted yet, um, the hitman, you know, brought in to pay some money. The husband may be following up on his wife. But let's face it, the wife is or the ex-wife is going to be the focus of everybody's ire. And obviously the prosecution is now focused on them with the most severe charges they can come up with. So how much of a difference does it make? I mean, her parents, I mean, extremely wealthy. And they're going to take care of their daughter. They're supporting their daughter 1,000%. The house they just arrested her from, the parents uh, bought that as well. Um, is that going to make a difference, do you think, in this case? Well, she's going to get the best representation. And let's face it, you know, our criminal justice system works much better, much better oiled when there's enough money to go around for experts, for the presentation. You know, Vinny, you know this as well as I do. We are going to hear about the abuse, presumably. We're going to hear about the, the child concerns that she has. To the extent that she's going to have to acknowledge some responsibility for this, that mitigation, that explanation, and those maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of experts they're going to bring in, certainly a, you know, an, a, an unending pocket of money is going to provide her a better defense than, I hate to say it this way, than a public defender's office can. Love public defenders. They're great lawyers. They're just very busy. Uh, but we know that that's going to happen. They're going to have the best of everything to try and help their daughter. So... I'm looking at, at what she's going to say in court, what her attorneys will say in court, and, and, and the, the strategy of what her defense will be to all of this, right? It's obvious it was a hit, and it's obvious that it's, it, it would be motivated by the issues that she had with her ex-husband. Is it possible to make the argument that her new husband is listening to her complain, complain, and on his own goes out and gets the hit man? I can anticipate that being either her main argument or certainly in the mix, because what she has to do is put the blame squarely on somebody else's shoulders, because she knows if it comes back to her, if husband testifies against her, for example, for a deal, um, if it comes back to her, it's obviously premeditated, ongoing, first-degree murder, even with the aggravating factors that Vinny, you and I both know about. 
if she can put it on the husband's shoulders, then at least she's just the wife who's distraught, abused maybe. And there's nice new husband thinking, I'm going to take this into my own hands. I'm going to protect her. I'm going to be a white knight on the stallion and come in. And I can certainly see that being a potential defense. So looking at this case of the of the you've got one defendant who's cooperating. The hitman is cooperating. He's going to testify. Obviously, he'll be attacked. But this is a guy who had no connection, no reason to kill this man other than for hire. It was purely just hire. He happened to live in the house where the now husband, I think new husband, owned the house. It was an opportunity. Uh, it was convenient. Obviously, money is not an issue. So you give whatever the money may have been. I don't think we know yet the amount, at least I'm not aware of it. You know, you start giving that money to somebody where they've never seen that much money before. And yes, someone can do that. And again, part of it also is the influence. You know, this guy has been abusing my wife. This guy abuses his children. This guy deserves whatever he gets coming to him, but we shouldn't wait until he kills somebody. You know, that kind of thing to talk the eventual hitman into it. But yes, we're going to see a lot of that. And I'm certain that this hitman is going to be, you know, star one of the state's case. Mark Amount, great to see you. Uh, we'll great do it again you. really, really soon. And any, chance right. we can give, any chance we can give Florida like a month break at some point where we <laughs> don't have a case like this in Florida? Uh, someday, but then people like you would be out of business, right? So we don't want to do you. that. All right. Mark Amount, great to see you, my friend. Be well. All right, folks. So. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the case um, in South Florida involving a woman named Courtney Clenny, an OnlyFans model, when we come back. In Osage, Oklahoma, dramatic new developments involving the BTK killer. He's now being linked to the murder of a cheerleader in 1976. And we have the sheriff investigating the case joining us live tonight. At this time, I'm going to ask, how do you plead? Guilty. Are you pleading guilty because you are guilty? Yes, sir. Domestic incident that ended with gunshots. Now, a Georgia woman claims self-defense. She stands trial for murder. And Court TV will bring you every minute. The self-defense or murder trial. Weekday mornings, only on Court TV. These are the cases that captivated the world. In Kim and Life Street, they were killed by their own children. Jeffrey! Court TV Legendary Trials. Go to CourtTV.com slash Legendary Trials to find out how to watch. When it gets 5 a.m., I Decide whether or not you're done gaslighting me. Decide whether or not you're done gaslighting me. I am mad that you told me to come. Decide right now. Honey, that's a threat. I asked you so many yep, times it, that yep. I don't know, and I apologize, you but you me. hit me. Shut the up. Don't. Your, don't. That's Christian Obenselli and Courtney Kleine, his girlfriend. He made that recording there alleging that she had hit him. She eventually stabbed him to death. She claims self-defense, but she is going to be on trial for murder down in Florida. And we've covered this story at length, and we, we have lots of uh, recordings and text messages between these two. So I haven't had the opportunity to hear the other side of this story. That's why joining us tonight from Coral Gables, Florida, is Courtney Clenny's attorney, Frank Prieto. Uh, Frank, great to see you tonight. Thanks so much for coming on. And I will... Uh, disclose to you, I don't know if you've seen, but I mean, every time I, I take a look at these recordings, these videos, I get the sense that she was the aggressor in the relationship. Am I right or wrong here? Uh, Vinny, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. I'm glad that we can finally have a little one-on-one -on -one here. Uh, yeah, no, you're wrong. And, and I, I, I hate to say that, I love your analysis, but um, you're, you're wrong. And, and the media has portrayed this case as very one-sided. Um, when we play and look at all the recordings in this case, the facts will come out that uh, Courtney was not the aggressor. She was the abused. Um, she went through so much gaslighting with this individual. Uh, the secret recordings, uh, this, this, and, and I just filed a motion to suppress these recordings, but the reason why he planned these recordings he would get her so riled up 
and then calm himself down and then record her privately to make her think that she's the crazy one. And that's what the evidence will show in this case is that that she was the victim. She was victimized. He was the gaslighting abuser. All right. So I wanted to go through a few of them and, and get your side of it, because I want to get both sides of this, because I know it's a trial. I know um, that she is is, whole, you know, claiming her innocence in all of this and that she's the actual victim. So let's take a listen to another uh, one of these secret recordings and, and tell me uh, what you see and what you hear in all of it. Sure. Both my dogs better be in that right there. You are so lucky both my dogs Stop hitting me. No, because you let my dogs I'm looking at it for you. My dogs. My bad. Me, my dogs are okay, more my bad. I'm just making No, sure. not your bad. Give me something. Give me something better than my I'm back. sorry. Okay, Courtney, just stop it. All right, so what are you hearing in there, and what's what's the, the rest of the story in, in that situation where, again, he's saying, you're hitting me, and she sounds like she's kind of angry at the time. Sure. Vinny, listen, we've never uh, disputed that from the beginning that this was a toxic relationship. Uh, however, the toxicity went in both directions. Uh, this is an example of, of Courtney. Look, you can hear her. She's clearly intoxicated, which was this guy's M.O. as an abuser. He would get order her drugs, keep her high as a kite and, and give, you know, feed her alcohol to the point that she would be inebriated. Um, and this was his M.O. He would do this constantly to manipulate her and keep her under his control to gaslight her into thinking that she's the one that's the, the lunatic in this relationship. When in fact, he was the the secret abuser, the quiet abuser. And there's a lot more to come uh, along the lines of, of this gentleman and, and his past. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, these recordings are not representative of Courtney in her day-to-day -day life. Uh, these are snippets of private and secretive recordings taken by Umbam Selly when he had her in a position where he knew he could manipulate her. Let, I want to show you um, one of the, the text messages, and this is from October 9th, 2021. Um, he is texting to her. So again, it's from his perspective, right? The crazy thing about all of this is that yesterday when you stabbed me in the leg and you saw how bad it was hurting me, I couldn't walk. Did I make you feel like bleep for stabbing me? No, I just sucked it up and hope tomorrow will be better. Um, did she stab him? A previous time before before she stabbed him and, and killed him? Uh, no, and and Vinny, let, let me let me start by saying this: uh, your your introduction to this piece that she stabbed him to death. Uh, I think that's a little bit of a misnomer. I, I understand that that's how it's been played out in the media, but this is a one stab case. This is not a person who repeatedly stabs somebody multiple times. Uh, an act of passion, as some would say, she threw the knife at him, and we may get there in a little bit, but she threw the knife at him, and this unfortunate incident resulted in his death. But no, she did not previously stab him. Uh, she, If you read the rest of those text messages, she never acknowledges that she did do that. Um, this is another form of his manipulation of him trying to uh, mentally gaslight her. So, so you mentioned, so let's get to it because uh, here she is in the police interrogation describing how she killed him. Let's, let's take a listen. So I grabbed my, sorry, I grabbed my, I grabbed my knife and I said, don't come anywhere closer to me. I had absolutely no intention of using it. I'm on the phone with my mom and he's coming at me like he's going to grab either the phone or like the knife or something. And so I was just like, I, I was like, don't, don't come any closer. It's coming at me and I threw it. So she th how far did she throw the knife? My understanding is the description by her, she's almost like throwing it across the room. Yeah, listen, uh, you know, that the interview of, of, of my client, um, clearly she was distraught during the interview. Um, I, I, would, I would tell uh, the media and, and any viewers that have, ac have access to the body-worn camera footage, uh, which is taken immediately when the police uh, respond, her story of, uh, you know, the true events of that evening when she threw the knife is completely consistent throughout from the moment the first responders arrive to the point where she's giving the interview. 
in the uh, in the police department. Uh, her story never wavers, never vacillates. She threw the knife. Um, and again, what what needs to be played more is that he was choking her out minutes before the, this occurred, when she had to take those actions to defend her life. But nobody wants to talk about that, which is a shame, but it will come out in trial. Will her mother be able to testify about that because she was on the phone as an ear witness? Did she hear what was happening? We, we do expect uh, her mother to testify either as a state witness or quite honestly, she'll be a defense witness either way. But, but yeah, she was on the phone at the time. But again, she's only listening to a phone conversation, which unfortunately, I think mom will, will testify that this was common. Uh, Courtney would call her mom when they were fighting. And in fact, Omum Selly would follow her around the house, take her phone away from her because he didn't want her talking to her parents because he was manipulating her and uh, mentally abusing her. And he did not want her speaking to the parents. Now, there was one other uh, thing I wanted to follow up with you on. And when the case first broke, I think we received a statement from you. And one thing stuck out to me, and, uh, and I'm wondering if that is still the case after you've investigated everything that's happened here. And it was an allegation that she was a victim of trafficking, that Christian Obamselli was trafficking her. Um, is that going to be a part of this trial? Is that part of, of your case and, and the proof and the evidence here? Uh, Vinny, you know, just like you, uh, you're a former New Jersey uh, prosecutor. I'm a former uh, Miami-Dade state prosecutor. Uh, I'm not throwing things out in the media unless I can support them. Uh, we have credible information from a, uh, an attorney uh, who reached out to me after this case made, w became public, indicating that he observed behavior that he viewed as uh, an exploitation of Courtney at a hotel in Miami Beach. Um, we've contacted this witness. Uh, he, this witness is ready to testify to what he observed. We've investigated this. Um, you know, this was um, a situation that, that when I said human trafficking, I meant it. Uh, we've done some more research into this. And, and yes, uh, there is evidence of human trafficking here. Uh, I, I don't think that that is going to the, be the main uh, staple of, of any defense in this case. But that's, th that's the, the horrific abuse that Courtney faced was not only her emotional and mental abuse, but there was an element of human trafficking here. We talk about what she did for a living and, and we can't judge her for, for being an Instagram model and, and an OnlyFans model. Um, you know, uh, that was, Obam Sally pushed her to make sex videos with him because why? Because he got paid. And she was not doing that prior to his suggestions to do that. And another defense witness will probably be some of her management team that will testify they had no idea why they would even pay this guy a dime. Frank Prieto, great to speak with you tonight. I'm glad we're getting, we always want both sides of the story. We don't always get it, but I'm glad we're getting it in this case. And I know she's in good hands because I know it's going to be a vigorous defense. Thanks so much, Frank. Thank you so much, Vinny. Take care. Great for having me. When we come back, we've got one more Florida woman to talk about. There she is, the so-called black swan, Ashley Benefield, former swimsuit model, former ballerina, now a murder defendant. Domestic incident that ended with gunshots. Now, a Georgia woman claims self-defense. She stands trial for murder. And Court TV will bring you every minute. The self-defense or murder trial. Weekday mornings, only on Court TV. These are the cases that captivated the world. Can keep my life straight. They were killed by their own children. Jeffrey! Court TV Legendary Trials. Go to CourtTV.com slash Legendary Trials to find out how to watch. My dad met Ashley nine months after my mom passed. He told me that they were actually married, not just dating. So her claim was that while she was pregnant with their daughter, he poisoned her through heavy metals. They disproved all of the allegations like every other time, but that started the real problems between Ashley and Doug. He's saying the neighbor came over, female neighbor. Mm -hmm. It was a domestic, she shot her husband. 
Ashley Benefield charged with murdering Doug Benefield, the father of her child and her husband. They were going through a, a, a horrific uh, battle, a custody battle. They lived up in the uh, mid-Atlantic region and moved down. She moved down to Florida to be with her mother. He came down. They were battling it out in court. She ends up shooting and killing him. Um, take a listen to part of the hearing that they had in court uh, when they were fighting for custody before the murder, obviously. He came home from work early and I was in the bedroom and he came in and he immediately became very angry and started accusing me of not loving him and said that if I had loved him that I would have responded with a kissing emoji or a heart back. At one point, he walked, like he had turned to walk away from me and um, he was standing in the opening of the closet and I was standing right on the outside of the closet and he turned around and he punched a hole through the wall with his fist. He uh, pulled the gun out, I believe it was in his boot, um, and he pulled it out and he started waving it around. Um, it was unholstered at the time. He um, then threw the gun facing me, it missed me, it hit the wall behind me and it punched a large hole. He started screaming and he told me that, this is a quote, that he was going to blow his brains out. And so I stopped and I dropped to the floor and I started crying and I begged him to not shoot the gun. And he said that, he, that I was gonna have to watch him shoot his brains out. And um, I was screaming and asking him not to. I told him I wouldn't leave. I was literally on my hands and knees. And he, um, I guess at some point, discharged the gun. I, I didn't see him aim it at the ceiling, but the bullet went into the ceiling. So a lot of allegations, a lot of allegations Ashley Benefield made against Doug Benefield in this custody battle. Joining me now from Sarasota, Florida, the attorney for Doug Benefield at those hearings, uh, Stephanie Murphy is with us. Stephanie, great to see you again. Um, Hi, Vinny. A lot of allegations. Was there any finding that Doug Benefield attempted to poison her or the baby or was physically abusive to her or the baby uh, in, in, in all of these battles that you had inside the courtroom? Not at all. In fact, I know you played it before. The judge said there is not one scintilla of credible evidence that supported any of Ashley's allegations, including domestic violence, the poisoning, or anything. This is vetted. This is all very clear. The judge was adamant that there was no credible testimony or evidence presented by Ashley. What was happening at the time that Doug was shot and killed by her? What was happening in, this, in, in, in the battle, the court battle that was uh, going on? It was an odd situation, actually. So in the court case, we had a hearing coming up a couple days after the murder where uh, psychological evaluations that had been put into place by the sheriff's department were going to be released. And there was a joint motion to release those. Just a couple of days prior, the parties had gone to a mediation where they advised the mediator and with their attorneys saying that they were reconciling and moving to Maryland together as a family. And it was their intention to dismiss the cases as soon as those psychological evaluations were released. The mediation was Thursday. The hearing to release the psyche valves was Wednesday of the following week. She killed him Sunday night before he was able to get his hands on those reports. So what you're telling me is that on the record, she is saying we are reconciling and we are moving to Maryland, not that he is following her and stalking her and won't leave her alone. Absolutely, 100%. That, that, because that's, I mean, that's what her defense is going to be here, right? That, that he's coming over to the house and he's uh, threatening her and he won't leave her alone and she just wants him to go away. But on the record is what you're saying. It's like part of the official proceeding here. We don't need the media anymore. We're reconciling. We're getting back together. We're going to move back to Maryland. Absolutely. That's part of the state attorney's court file. That's been produced in evidence where she stated to her attorney and then both attorneys stated to the mediator that they were reconciling and they were moving to Maryland together. And so when Doug was at her house on Sunday night, the night that she murdered him,
he was there because he was doing the last bit of packing of her things into the U-Haul because they were going to hit the road the next morning to head up to Maryland together. I, I, then come to find out she had guns planted all over the house so that he could come over and pack. So why on earth would she have guns all over the house loaded in different rooms in a house that's almost completely empty with a toddler walking around the house if it wasn't her intention to kill him because she knew that a couple days later he was going to get his hands on the evaluation that said, actually, I have no intention of reconciling. I'm just trying to get out of Florida in order to avoid the jurisdiction of the court and this one particular judge who a couple of days from now is going to release these evaluations the same judge who a couple of years prior said not one scintilla of credible evidence was presented to support ashley's story wow i mean if i'm the prosecutor of the case i'm going to argue that this reconciliation or alleged reconciliation is part of the premeditation for the murder Unbelievable story, Kay. Stephanie, great to see you tonight. Thank you so much. We'll speak again. Thank you.